a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who had betrayed Jesus, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, for whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its heath, its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Well, Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. And since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I've spoken openly to the world. I've always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together, I've said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When Jesus had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck him on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I've spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong." But if I've spoken rightly, then why do you strike me? Then Anna sent Jesus bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. And they asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves. Judge him according to your law. But the Jews replied, 
We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king, and for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked Jesus, What is truth? After he had said this, Pilate went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you over the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? And they shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on Jesus' head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Well, Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Here is the man. And when the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered, Pilate, we have a law. And according to that law, he ought to be put to death because he's claimed to be the son of God. And now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. That was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the Jews, here is your king. And they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked, shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, we have no king but the emperor. And they handed him over to be crucified. The seven last words of Christ. Then Jesus said to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. 
and the soldiers cast lots to divide his clothing. Jesus replied to the criminal, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then Jesus said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I'm thirsty. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. On that day, that Friday, he was made to suffer, inflicted by our transgressions, burdened by our iniquities, tortured by our violence, more than what he could endure, hatred made real and palpable, anger and cruelty against the body, lashed out on the skin against all that was true and good and beautiful, a mob lynching the innocent against the divine son who just wanted to be one of us, cutting down the tree to carve out a cross grown from a seed, a plant whose life's goal was to reach the sun and provide air to this world, the sustenance of breath. people of power made it into an instrument and tool to execute a political prisoner. Someone who was deemed a traitor because he sought a world better than our own. One where we sit at the table together, where the sick are healed, their wounds mended, and liberation is pronounced to the imprisoned to speak against the principalities of this world resisting their strategies of violence, declaring the day of the Lord. But all these dreams were dashed on hardened hearts, hearts not able to see God with us, present, breathing the same air, laughing, crying, sleeping, being with, standing beside, needing us as much as we needed him. Except for the few women who followed him to the end, he was abandoned, left to die, until he breathed his last, until he forgave his offenders, executed with thieves, death row inmates, hanging their heads with him, until the clouds darkened, their chests sunken, until the light of the world was extinguished by merciless hands, making the brilliant sky dark, eclipsing, crucifying God, open God, vulnerable God, tender God, who hung there, as dead as that tree.